QuickBooks Online 2024 Bill for Hourly Services of Staff Entering Billable Time. Get ready and some coffee because we get work done on time with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left hand side in the favorites. Right click in the balance sheet so we can open link in a new tab. Right click in the profit and loss to repeat the opening of the link. And right click in the trial balance to open the link in a new tab. Tabbing to the right. Closing the hamburger and then changing the range. We're going to go from 010124 tab 022824. Let's break it out on a month by month, side by side, and then run that report. Tabbing to the right, repeating the process, closing up the hamburger. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Change in the range 010124 tab 022824 month by month on the breakout. Run it to refresh it. Tapping to the right, repeating the process. One more rep here, one more rep. We can do it. Here we go, 010124 tab, 022824 tab, month by month breakout, and then run. Okay, take a breather, take a breather, stretch a little bit. We're going to go back to the balance sheet now. The scenario this time being that we're going to be entering time into our system. Imagine we have a system similar to what you might see in a law firm or CPA firm uh, where we have a staff. The staff does work typically for the partners. So you might have multiple partners that are using the staff in order to do work for basically clients. And the staff member then are going to have to give the information that they worked on, the clients that they worked on in a timesheet format to the partners. So the partners can then bill the clients uh, for the work that has been done. So this would be kind of a job cost system. You can imagine it in a construction setting as well but it's often also in service areas where you have like a job cost system, like a law firm, CPA firm, bookkeeping firm, or something like that. So to have a similar scenario in our guitar shop, we're going to be imagining that our, we have people that do guitar lessons. So we own the guitar shop. We have people that do guitar lessons. They come into our shop. We bring in the clients here. We're like the partner. We bring in the clients. We're the money makers. And then we have the staff do the work, actually provide the lessons, and then they bill for the lessons, and then they tell us about the, about the billings so that we can then bill the client for the lessons that have been provided. Let's look at a quick flowchart over here to get an idea. This is the desktop flowchart, even though we're using it for online purposes, because we just want to look at the flow of the forms. We're in the employee area, and we're looking at the time tracking. However, it's deceptive that this is down here in the time tracking because it doesn't necessarily mean that it's only for employees in order to record their time. In other words, if we have an hourly employee, we might use this in order to then populate the time when we process their paychecks. I need to know how many hours they work to process the paycheck. But even if we paid them salary, in which case I don't need to know their asset, their, their hours to process the payroll, because I just pay them the same amount each time. I still might need the timesheet, even if they weren't employees at all. And we have them as contractors, which you have to be careful of to see if they could qualify as contractors. But even if they did, they qualify as contractors, we still might want to enter their time. Why? 
because we want to use it to bill the clients. If you've ever seen the, the law, there's a movie about the law movie. It's kind of old now. It was called Devil's Advocate, where the, where the, the star was working for kind of a, these crooked, uh, had a crooked employ or clients and whatnot. But the firm kept on telling him, I don't care if you're even just thinking about the client, make sure that you bill it, write it down, bill it. We need to send out the bill for it, right? And so you could do that internally within QuickBooks by entering the time into the system here, or possibly you can imagine some other system where you have an out external software, or you could just do it in, in Word or Excel, and then on a weekly basis or monthly basis, provide that information to the partner who's actually going to send out the bill, right? Because the partners don't actually do any work, right? They're the money makers. They go out and wine and dine, you know, and then and then bring in the clients and then make all the staff uh, do the work, right? And then they bill, and then they bill for it, right? That's how the system works. So that's going to be that's going to be what we will do here. Let's go back on over. And so we're going to go to the first tab. Now, you'll recall that the payroll tab is over here. We touched on this in a prior presentation. If you have payroll, then then you have your employees in this section. If you go into a particular employee, then you can see you have the time tracking and uh, the pay and tax docs, and you can send invitations here. However, you, you might not be in a situation where you're processing the payroll within QuickBooks. Maybe you have someone else doing the payroll, or maybe these people are set up basically as contractors or something, and you still want to basically track their time. Note that we have here uh, the payroll tab and the time tab. If you go to the time tab, it manages basically the time being spent, usually when you're thinking about basically employees, uh, right? So this will be tracking basically time. However, if that were the case, you might be saying, well, why wouldn't it be under the payroll tab then? It's not under the payroll tab because uh, you could imagine using this system even for people that aren't employees, even if you're not, if you, if you don't have payroll set up within QuickBooks, possibly you'll have payroll set up with an external user. You still might want to track the time because, because then you, you might, that might help them to process payroll if you have like an ADP or a paychecks, but it also will allow you to bill for the time. If you're using this kind of job cost system, if you have contractors, you still might track the time yourself as the owner of a sole proprietor you would not be a employee then you wouldn't be withholding or issuing yourself a w-2 but you might still want to track your own time because of course you want to use it to bill uh the clients for if you're in a job cost type of system so i think that all of quickbooks if you go to unless you're in the the most basic level of QuickBooks. I think they're providing this time tab to everyone, even if you don't have employees and even if you're in a fairly basic level uh, of the QuickBooks. So this is the newest, latest and greatest way to be using the time. If you're in a, a QuickBooks earlier than that, you might still have access to the old system, which is under the plus button here. And you have the single time e entry and the weekly timesheet. So this was the weekly timesheet we used to basically use uh, here, and it's got a similar kind of, of system or worksheet. But now usually I think they're trying to get everybody to basically move into this uh, time entry over here, and then we can go into our time entries, and we can enter our time here. Before I do that, by the way, if you go back to the, to the overview, if you wanted to add employees, then you can add them here and you can send out, you can send this out to them to hopefully allow them possibly to be entering the time on their end. But if they don't do that, if they just provide you with weekly time in an Excel worksheet or some other software, then you can do it that way and just manually populate it by going to the time uh, entries as well. So let's go over here and we're going to basically enter another time entry. This was for last month. So I'm going to add a time on the right. And I like to do it on a weekly time entry. You can imagine doing it weekly, but you could also have the clock running your, your actual time or add a single entry. So let's go to the weekly time entry. And I'm going to say that this is going to be for February. So let's see if I can go to the last 
period in February that's fully in February. So let's go from the 18th to the 24th. It, the whole week is in February. I'm going to switch the user and I'm going to say it's going to be for Adam Hamilton. So I now I have it for Adam Hamilton. And then so here is our entry. So we have the customer. We've got the day of the week. So let's add a customer. And this first one, I'm just going to make up a, a customer this time. So we're going to say, let's say, now it won't let me add a customer within this sheet, which is which might be a good internal control if you have other people entering time so they don't like mess up your customer list. But so that means let's open up a new tab. I'm going to right click on this tab, duplicate it. I'm going to pull it to the left and let's go down into the sales tab and into the customers and then i'm going to add a new customer very generic customer i'm going to add and we're just going to call customer i'm just going to put it in the required field customer one i know it's quite generic and so that's it i'm just going to add that we would probably want more contact information if these are going to be repeat customers but i'm just going to use that for our time entry and let's see if i can populate there it pops in here customer number one and we're going to say that he worked on, let's say, Monday for two hours. And then we're going to say on Wednesday for two hours. And then we're going to say that it will be billable. So service item, this is going to be the item. Notice I have here Adam Hamilton time. But what I'd like to do is say that this is going to be his guitar uh, time that I'm going to do for guitar lessons. So this was his generic uh, time. They won't let me add another item as in this field. So let's go back to the first tab. And this kind of makes sense from an internal control standpoint, because you don't really want your employees to be adding time uh, or, or items as they enter their time. So I can go back on over here and say, let's go to the sales tab. Let's go to the products and services. And I'm going to add a new let's say service time, and it's gonna be for Adam Hamilton guitar lessons. I may not have spelled that right, but that's what we're going with. And then that'll be the description and the price, let's say is $75. So we charge $75 for Adam's guitar lessons, service income. It's not gonna be taxable because it's a service item with regards to sales tax. So I'm going to say it's a non-taxable item here. And there we have nothing on the purchasing side. Let's create it and see if that pulls on over to our worksheet. So let's select the drop down and it doesn't pull over. So I'm going to refresh the screen. I might have to enter this again, but that's okay. So I'm going to hide this and we're going to go into the time entries, add time weekly time sheet and let's see if it pulls in down here we're going to say this is going for well, let me close this out let's change it to switch user adam hamilton boom and the date is going to be february 18 to 24 and then the customer is going to be customer number one all right now i have this populated down below and billable i'm going to say uh yes and then i'm going to say that it's going to be Ammo Hamil Am adam hamilton guitar lessons okay then he worked on two hours on monday and then wednesday two hours okay that's good now note that these options the service item being charged and whether it be billable or not used to be columns so that we can assign one service item and whether it be billable or not to the selections for an entire row. So that would mean that if we wanted a different service item, even for the same customer, we would have to go then to another row. Now at first look, it looks like this is actually even more restrictive because you might think that this would be applied to all the time entered on the entire worksheet, which would mean that we can only make all of it either billable or non-billable and only assign one item to everything on the worksheet. But that's not actually how it's set up. If you go into each of these items, you can change this service item and whether it be billable or not for each of the individual time entries. 
So be careful with that. That's actually more versatile. However, it can be a little bit confusing because you can't really see it in the middle of the timesheet. You have to actually click on the time and look at it down here. When we finish doing the time entries and then save it, then we will be able to go back into the time and see them as individual entries, which is actually a little bit more detailed. And we'll be able to see if the billable items and the proper service items have been applied out. Whatever Adam Hamilton works on, we're going to charge for his particular rate, whatever, whether he did bookkeeping or taxes. And then that way you can, you can apply it out to the whole sheet. In our case, he's just doing guitar lessons. So that doesn't not become a problem. Now, what, Another thing we keep in mind is that this one, of course, is going for customer number one. So even if he worked on some of these other days, I can't put it on the same row because, because that would be going to customer number one, right? So, that, so I have to put customer number two if there's another customer on a different row and I'm gonna have to add another, I think I already have a customer two. Let's say go in here and we have a customer number two. So let's just use that one. And if you don't have it, you can add customer number two over here in the customers area and then populate it. And then we're going to say that he worked on customer number two on Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, so that should be the billable items. I'm just going to say guitar lessons from Adam as the note. And that should pull in so that we can then use this information to populate it into an invoice, which we'll do in a future presentation. So is that all I need? I think that's all I need. Let's go ahead and say for 75, let's save it. And then it's been saved, close. And I'm gonna go, okay, so let's go and close this out. I think it's been saved. And now I'm gonna set a custom range here because I'm working in the future. So I'm going from January to February. And so here's the information for Adam. If I go into Adam's information, it shows it one by one. So here we have uh, the days, each of the days. So here's February uh, uh, and it's been unapproved, 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 unapproved for those four. So that looks good. And then these two down here, were for last month and those have already been approved so they're already good to go okay so if i go into one of these i can edit it and there's the in this one entry and i can go into the the manual time card and here's the actual uh time card entry so i'm going to close this back out i'm going to go back to the time sheet here and let's see if we can just simply approve it and so, so uh, you will be approving and locking time from 1-1-24 uh, to 2-29 uh, for this team member. So I'm gonna say, okay, let's, let's do it. That's fine. Let's go ahead and save it. And then if I go into my sales tab and I go into my all sales item, we should have unbillable items for time that has been entered that hasn't been billed yet. So there we have it for customer number one and customer number two. And then if I go into the customers over here, we should also be able to sort by unbilled time. So there it is for customer one, customer two, and they have those two unbilled times. If I go into customer number one, we've got these time charges that we can use to convert to an invoice, which is nice. Let's do a similar process for Erica, our other employee. So I don't have a billable rate yet. So the first thing to do is I'm gonna say, okay, Erica's set up, she's gonna do guitar lessons. So I'm gonna go, okay, let's go into my sales tab and let's set a rate up for her guitar lessons in the products and services. And I'm just gonna call it drop down service item. And I'm gonna call it Erica guitar lessons. Duh, duh. And so it's going to be a service item and apparently she's more in demand. So she, we're going to charge lessons, lessons. I'll teach you a lesson. Well, that's great. That's what I'm here for is to learn. That's good because I'm about to teach you a lesson. 
why are you saying it like that? I try, I'm paying you to teach me a lesson. That's good because I'm. That's what I do. I'm gonna teach you a lesson. Okay. <laughs> so, any case, so we're gonna save that. Oh wait, we don't want any sales tax. Let's get rid of the sales tax, and then save it. And we're gonna go. Okay, one fifteen. Let's save that. And that looks good. And then I'm going to make two more customers, generic customer three and four, as you might guess. Let's go to more customer tab and add two more customers. So we've got customer three, we're going to say, and then we're going to say save, and then a new one, new one. And we're going to say, uh, wait, wait, that's not right spot. Let's say a new one and customer four. Let's save that. And then we're gonna go back into our, our billable or time entries. Let's go into our time entries. And so now I'm gonna add a new time entry weekly. And this is gonna be for switch user Erica. Erica. And so we're going to say that she worked on uh, customer three or had gu guitar lessons. And once again, she worked on Monday and Wednesday, two hours. We're going to say two hour guitar lessons. And then also she worked for customer number four guitar lessons on Tuesday and Thursday. And we're going to say that they are billable. Yes. And we're going to say that the billable rate is Erica Guitar Lessons. And we'll just call it Erica Guitar Lessons in the note. So that's her time, eight hours. We're charging 115 for her rate. So I'm going to save that. And there we have change saved. Change is saved. Okay, close that. I think we're good. There's Erica's time popping in there. If I go into that we see it one by one uh there and that looks good and so then if i edit it there's our entry here and then if i go into the time entry we can see our uh, time entry so notice on the first one it says it's billable and then on the second oh i, I can make it billable per line so here we go. So I'm going to say this is going to be Erica guitar lessons. Okay, I have to make each one of them. I see how it's working. Erica guitar lessons is billable. And then here we're going to say Erica guitar lessons is billable. And then this one is going to be Erica guitar lessons is billable. Okay. So I can actually change it per line item. So I misspoke myself before when I said that I still think it's a little bit cleaner the way it was before where you can basically put it for an entire line. But here you can basically change it per, I'm gonna say this is billable. I can change it per entry with the lesson with this item down here. Although that's a little bit confusing because you can't see it easily in the timesheet. So why is it? And then it's got this little click mark here. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's see if I got it now. So Erica Guitar Lessons, is it billable? Yes. And then Erica Guitar Lessons, billable? Yes. Erica Guitar Lessons, billable? Yes. Let's put this in the notes on all of them too. There's the note. There's the note. There's the note. And then let's save it again. And then it's saved. So I'm going to close this back out. So now we've turned them all on to be billable. So that looks correct now. So let's go ahead and save that. So approve time. Okay. Uh, lock time through through. You will be approving locking for this member approve time. And if I go back. So there is that if I go back to my time entry here and I look at Adam just to view the time entry. This timesheet has been approved and cannot be edited. A manager must unapprove 
uh, the day or week the timesheet falls in. So we'd have to unapprove it to go back in it. If I go into the manual time entry, which we should be able to do as the manager, but here when I when I selected this information, it applied to all of them basically by default. So I think that one is correct. Let's close this out and let's now uh, check it out. If I go into the sales tab on the left and we go in once again to the sales information, unbilled uh, income. Now we've got these unbilled time that we're going to be entering from our staff, from our employees. And then if I go to the customers, we can go back into the unbilled area. And once again, now we've got all these customers that we can bill out this information for. For example, customer number three, where we have these uh, billable items. So if you needed to remove that time as a supervisor or whatever, then you'd have to unapprove it, right? So you'd have to go back in here as, as the uh, manager and unapprove the time and then change it in the time entry so you can unapprove and then make changes uh, to it if you needed to adjust it after that point after you've already approved it. All right, so no changes have been made to the income statement and the balance sheet, the financial reports as of yet, because all we've done is enter the time. We haven't charged uh, for the time at this point in time. And remember, we're not really entering this time information to process the payroll we're entering the information so that we can then create invoices from it. And that's what we'll do in uh, a future presentation. Also remembering that if I build for myself, then I, I, I might set myself up basically as kind of an employee, at least for the purposes of processing uh, the billing, right? Or possibly of contractors might not necessarily be employees. You might not necessarily have your payroll set up in order to still use this time entry system for a job cost kind of system because you might be doing payroll outside of the outside of quickbooks or you might not be doing the payroll in the same way possibly having contractors or partners or something like that equity shares uh within the organization that still needs to be built out for